Hey guys, it's me, Fox. I promised to review a video of my spindle and it has been over a year and to prove that I know something about it I have uh, that bucket of uh, chips or another one uh, yep. so those are uh, 55 liters uh, buckets and I went through around 15 of them um, so quite a lot of chips and um, what can I say so far I freaking love it and if I kill this one I'm gonna get exactly the same one so how is the spindle? Um, the spindle is freaking amazing uh, I can say pretty much that's the best uh, Chinese spindle is out there um, since I had the 2.2 kilowatt uh, regular Chinese uh, spindle I have the problems with the uh, broken end mills and um, with this spindle since over a year I haven't broke a single end mill or chipped or anything it's just I think they just got dull but no breakage or anything like that um, so I think it's uh, because of um, how well balanced it is and that thought brings me to a uh, vibration test uh, which I've done when I got the spindle and now so you can compare the difference after cutting uh, 15 buckets of uh, chips uh, over the one year uh, timeline and here it is okay I tried to reproduce the same setup as before and the zoom And we're gonna start from uh, 3000. That's uh, 3000 RPM. Four thousand. Five thousand. Six thousand. Seven thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand, eleven thousand, twelve thousand. Thirteen thousand, fourteen thousand, fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand, seventeen thousand. Eighteen thousand, nineteen thousand, twenty, twenty one thousand, twenty two thousand. Twenty three thousand, twenty four thousand. As you notice, the difference are not that big. Um, it got more vibrations at the lower uh, RPMs, and uh, then it got really quiet at nine. I don't know why, and then. Uh, around twin um, I, th I think it was getting better uh, over time at the higher RPMs um, I did crash it a few times um, when I was um, playing with the tool changer 
I got something wrong in Mac 3 um, and I crashed it so bad that I thought it's um, unrepairable and um, I show you um, how, how badly I crashed it um, I crashed it so bad um, that the collet was rubbing against the metal um, and that's uh, another one when I, like, I plunged so deep I went through all of the I think I had that different end mill or the same one but shorter um, I went it so deep that went through all of the uh, end mill and then start rubbing pushing the material in so I thought after that it would be the end but Nope, it wasn't. Um, yes, as you can see, I have uh, quite a few more collets or tool holders. Um, I think I have 14 of them and uh, I used them all. Yeah, uh, so I made a stand for 20, I believe. But uh, yeah, so I guess it's time to get some more. Um, and maybe we can go now to actually cutting. How does it cut? And uh, that's gonna be something spectacular. Here we go. Ten millimeter deep, one millimeter side cut. Now will be one and a half millimeter uh, side cut, ten millimeter deep. Two millimeter side cut, ten millimeter deep. Two and a half millimeter side cut, ten millimeters deep. That might be too much. Three millimeter side cut and ten millimeters deep. Three and a half millimeters side cut, ten millimeters deep. And now four millimeters side cut, ten millimeters deep. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna go any further than this because that looks wrong. Okay, let's go. Fuck. Yeah, I I I I, <laughs> I did the mistake. I cut eight millimeters, um, ten deep, uh, and um, wow, wow, <laughs> that was uh, spectacular, definitely. Um, I start getting some chips welded on the on the side. Um, that's you know because no coolant. That sucks. Um, and uh, how the finish looks? Um, in fact, it looks spectacular, actually. Wasn't it uh, spectacular? The uh, eight millimeter width of cut on ten millimeter deep and one thousand uh, millimeters per minute uh, travel, and with the twenty four thousand RPM spindle, like. Uh, I'm doing all the tests with 24,000 and uh, 10 millimeter um, thick end mill and I guess it's 
stick out. It's around uh, 30 something millimeters. So quite ridiculous, but I usually cut some uh, uh, deep stuff. So I have to use uh, all all of the end mill, uh, really. Um, so that's why such a ridiculous thing. And uh, I don't have any more collets uh, or tool holders to have uh, shorter end mills. So I'm just plowing everything with the 10 millimeter very long stick out. Um, I know it's a crime, but sue me. <laughs> Um, so now um, more cuts with uh, slightly faster feeds. Uh, let's take a look. Half a millimeter side cut, 20 millimeters deep. This time one millimeter side cut, 20 millimeters down. One and a half millimeter side cut, 20 millimeters deep. I think that's a bit stretching because of the tool deflection, but let's go, let's see it. Yep, um, no chatter or anything. Uh, feed 2000 millimeters per minute and one millimeter side cut 10 millimeters deep. <laughs> 2000 millimeters per minute feed, two millimeter side cut and 10 millimeters deep. Three millimeters side cut, ten millimeters deep, two thousand millimeters per minute speed. Four millimeters side cut, two thousand millimeters per minute, ten millimeters deep. Three thousand millimeters per minute, ten millimeters deep, one millimeter side cut. Three Two millimeter side cut, three thousand millimeters per minute, ten millimeters deep. Three millimeter side cut, three thousand millimeters per minute, ten millimeters deep. Three thousand millimeters per minute feed, four millimeters side cut, ten millimeters deep. That was a bit much, I think. Let's see the finish. Okay, I'm not touching it, because if I touch it, um, oh yes, uh, so that's the finish, no coolant, right, the bottom, I think it's, looks okay, uh, no chatter visible, Here is a bit of a tool deflection. 
I think, but it's really minimal. Um, so yeah, that was uh, 3,000 millimeters per minute. So three meters a minute uh, feed. And how the chips are looking? The chips are uh, those are the one centimeter um, deep, I think. I mean, it's kind of hard to find uh, the latest chips. Um, you know, from the thickest cut, because there is a freaking plenty of them. Um, here are some really thick ones. Some of them. Monstrous. Uh, and yeah, no coolant. Uh, and the blunt uh, in the middle, pretty much. Mm. Yeah, what I meant about the tool deflection, the tool was deflecting, you know, quite a lot, I guess, but uh, it wasn't going uh, into a chatter. So, I kind of think, I wouldn't recommend to do 3 meters per minute uh, feed uh, with a 4 millimeter cut, because it's uh, slightly too much, I think. Uh, I think something would have to give up, or, or, or I don't think the spin would give up, but the VFD would definitely give up um, eventually. Um, and um, I cut it with the, that end mill, and uh, I think this end mill is uh, at least a half a year old. Um, yeah, something like that. Um, so it's not the new end mill, and my point wasn't uh, to show the finish, um, because the finish, um, it, it, it's not that simple. It, it's, a, it's a spindle plus the machine. If your machine is super rigid, you're going to get the really good finish. And then the tool itself, you know, it's like that is uh, some Chinese uh, end mill, so it's nothing, you know, fancy uh, or a good brand or anything. Um, so those are quite important things. M my point here was to show the cap capability of the spindle and uh, show you what uh, what's on the VFD and what are the limits. So I thought, you know, just to clear it up. And after those ridiculous cuts, I can show you, I'm just gonna try to clean those um, chips welded because of the dry cut. So, oops. that's how it looks uh, after half a year using it. If you take a look at the end of it, oh gee, the focus on that camera is non existing. Uh, there is no chips of the end mill. Uh, it looks you know, really good. Pretty much just like new, but I know it's uh, a bit of blunt. Um, yeah, what more I can say about the spindle? Um, it's freaking amazing. <laughs> you know, what can I say? Um, huh, huh. Maybe what I've done. Um, the one thing which I've done is um, I plug the the air to the spindle uh, by a solenoid and I connect it to a VFD. So each time I turn on the VFD, the air uh, turns by itself um, so I don't have to, you know, remember to turn it on because yes, I a couple of times forget to turn on the air, so the air which goes through the bearing to keep the chips uh, from getting into the spindle. Um, so I don't know what damage I've done by not doing it. Um, I guess minimal, as you can see, you know, the vibration test before and after, there was not much of a difference. Um, but yeah, now it's automatic, so I don't have to um, worry about it. Um, and another thing which I want to do is uh, to connect the flat cooling, um, but that's 
um, on the VFD, the other um, uh, relays are 24 volts, uh, very low um, amperage, so I guess I will have to come up with my own PCB which does it, or if you have any suggestions, um, I'm all ears. Um, and uh, with the tool changing, um, I'm using a um, solenoid valve um, and how the hell it works? Uh, oh yeah, I have another one, I think. Uh, let me see. Uh, do I have, yeah, so that solenoid valve is for um, the air which goes to a spindle uh, and it turns on automatically when you turn on the spindle. And that one, uh, and that one is for the tool changers. So I just press that button, and and uh, I'm changing the tool. I thought I thought, you know, it could be nice to have a, some the button in front of the CNC or something, but it, it, it's really not worth uh, overcomplicating stuff, and I don't find it uh, annoying or anything. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, uh, quite important um, for you who want to buy a spindle like that or similar, the from Yan Ken. Uh, if you mention my name, you're gonna get the you know pretty big discount. Um, or my channel, you just mention Fox and uh, they give you. They should they should give you a really good price. Um, I think uh, I recommend that spindle like uh, nothing else really. Um, uh, if you're concerned about the um, ceramic bow bearings, um, I guess you don't have to be concerned after this spectacular crash. Um, nothing really happened. It was sounding a bit strange for. Uh, few minutes but then all went back into normal um, yeah so I don't know tell me what you think uh, and yeah one more thing if you think you can put that uh, spindle on uh, you know uh, 60 40 Chinese CNC you know the main one of aluminium and you think you're gonna be cutting like this you you're very wrong you very wrong. Um, I think then you're gonna explode um, and it won't cut. Uh, your machine would have to be very very rigid, uh, like rock solid as uh, this is what it is, um, uh, to do that. Um, so depends how rigid is your machine, uh, your spindle will behave worse or better so as more rigid better it is so that's um you know quite important tip uh for those who think if you're gonna get that spindle all your problems are gonna disappear no they won't um please let me know what you think um if you have any questions just ask them uh, there will be more information uh, in the description under the video and uh, what can I say more? See ya!